and this is a secret place on the Great British Swim because this is where I do a lot of my thinking <laughs> not in a weird way but this is where I'll basically start putting on a wetsuit that is no doubt probably cold and wet from the day before so I'll start by wringing it out getting rid of a bit of the salt water um, and then yeah it's just this is between these four walls it's just kind of where you have a real conversation with yourself especially at two o'clock in the morning because you can look out of the little hole here and uh, it's pitch black you know that there's jellyfish out there you probably know that you're going to get stung in the face but you don't know when how many times and how badly and also the bed is just there and you're like it would be so much easier to just get back into bed it's warm you know it's warm you know there's no jellyfish in your bed um and this is this is really the moment where the great british swim will be won or lost because if i don't keep getting out of here then the winter will come and and you won't be able to swim back to margate basically so it's just this is it doesn't look like much but yeah this is this is this is a special place in a weird way the toilet on hecate these are my sea socks Ev like everything's wet <laughs> it's so hot. even my bed's wet even my like i've been in the same hoodie and i'm trying to dry them and they just they won't dry it, it's so hard to explain but everything is wet and humid especially in scotland right time to go to work so um we're into the most exposed bit um north of the sky <laughs> Basically anything that piles into the North Atlantic now is going to hit us. A severe go in the forecast last night. Uh, Ross is in the sea in 30 knots of wind yesterday. Yeah, we are starting to see some uh, much more serious conditions coming in. As soon as Matt stopped smiling, the whole team just sort of said, hey, something's up. And, and this right now just kind of highlights just how hard it is for the seasoned professionals here out in the Scottish waters and just an oddly shaped swim.
So guys, I said just a few weeks back um, when we were down here somewhere that Scotland is massive and I'm quickly discovering just how big it is. Had all the media teams on last week, which was amazing. Uh, it was so good speaking to everybody and seeing what people think about the Great British Swim outside of this boat. But there's now no more champagne and smiles. Uh, the cameras have disappeared and it, it's just back to those cold, hard miles. And I've got to hold my hands up and say I was a little bit guilty of just getting swept up in, in the media frenzy and I, I was looking on social media and, and everything around the world record I kind of let my guard down a little bit and I know I said I wouldn't, but it's it's just so hard not to enjoy that moment. You, you have to allow yourself to enjoy it, but then immediately snap out of it as well. But do you know one of the best ways I've found to be humbled and, and brought back down to earth and reminded that you still have pretty much the rest of the country to swim around? That's the Scottish waters. They're the harshest, toughest, and best teacher. The wind, the rain, um, the jellyfish as well. Not only that, but the waves are just meaner. And, and I know that sounds really weird, but right now we're just getting smashed by southwesterly winds. So they're kind of doing this, which means my left shoulder as I'm swimming up here, which if you remember was my weaker shoulder, it's just taking an absolute battering. So after, a, I think it was eight hours in the water yesterday, my left arm was just barely coming out of the water. Don't want to sound hard or too cold hearted on poor old Ross who's slogging away out there. I don't care if it's cold as long as it's not hypothermic. I don't care if his shoulders are aching as long as he's not injuring himself. Yeah, this was always going to be hard and it was always going to be endurance. It has to be something to endure. And um, you know, all I really care about at the moment is the cracks on because you know, autumn's coming. The gales are on the way. We've already had a couple of gales. Gales are in the forecast. And if we don't get around Cape Roth before the you know, proper autumn when the weather sets in, we're just not going to make it. Also as well, it's inevitable that the waves and your goggles will fall out when it comes to Scotland. That's just because the waves up here, that they're not nice and rhythmic. They're more just sporadic and choppy and you'll just get hit from every angle. So as a result, my goggles were just leaking and I just couldn't get them to attach to my face properly. And so in desperation, just because we needed to make up the miles just to get out of here, just at the Isle of Skye, I just ended up punching myself in the face. So the goggles just embedded into my eye socket. I got out and I just had these giant puffy eyes. And that's basically the stage we're at now with the Great British Swim. You know, this was never gonna be pleasant. But at the moment, if your goggles are leaking, you punch them into your eye socket so they don't leak and you keep swimming. I wasn't gonna say this, but when we started the whole Great British Swim, I made a promise that I wanted to broadcast everything as openly, as honestly as possible. And I don't know whether it was um, some bad food, you know, some bad mackerel, or I caught a bug off one of the media team, but we still had eight miles to make up yesterday, which meant that I swam most of it being sick. And this is where you're faced with the dilemma. It's like, you've got eight miles and void of any sort of social etiquette. You just think, I've got to make up those eight miles whether I'm being sick or not. And the waves were so bad, I was essentially being sick, but then the waves were washing with me. So I was just bathing in my own <laughs> sick for a few meters before I managed to outswim my sick. Again, I'm not proud. Um, it's not pleasant. <laughs> I'm just saying it happened. But one of the strangest things about everything that I've just said is I'm not complaining. I'm genuinely not complaining. No one's holding a gun to my head. I'm the one who said that I was gonna swim around Great Britain. So the reality is your neck is always probably gonna chafe. You know, your tongue, it's probably always gonna start falling apart because of salt tongue. You are gonna be sick. And I don't have to do those miles, but that just means that we're not gonna swim around Great Britain any faster. And so when I say all of these things to Matt and the team, it's just stating a fact. Which brings me on to motivation, which is a reoccurring theme, as you can imagine, throughout the whole of the Great British Swim. And a lot of people will message me and say, what did you think about on that particular tide or that particular swim? And recently, seeing the contrast between the media arriving and, and being there all on my own in the Scottish waters, I've been thinking a lot about the difference between being extrinsically motivated and intrinsically. Extrinsically is just about being motivated by those external factors. So it's really easy to swim like I was earlier this week when uh, the camera crews are here, when you're being given plaques and you're pouring champagne. It's really easy to swim like that. But right now, as a stark contrast, you need to be intrinsically motivated when 
all the camera crews have gone, all the champagne has been poured, and there's no more plaques to give out, you need to just look across those cold Scottish waters and just think, what is it intrinsically, what is it innate within me that is gonna make me clock the necessary miles that day? And one thing I'm finding with the Great British Swim is, you need a giant serving of both extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. But up here in remote rural Scotland, it's, it's largely intrinsic. I'm mainly motivated by being that old granddad Ross Edgeley just in my rocking chair telling my grandkids about the time I saw around Great Britain. Okay guys, that's it for this week. Uh, signing out from somewhere in the Scottish Sea. I'm not entirely sure where, um, but I do know that John O'Groats is this way. Uh, so I've got some more swimming to do, some more... <laughs> Can't feel my fish. <laughs> and I'll see you next week. Cheers, guys. Well done, mate.